So I want to talk a little bit about the observable universe. And I spent a few time, few days looking at this. Now, in the observable universe, that is, once the 24 tattvas are there, they are mixed and the Brahmanda has come into being. That is, the material universe has come into being. What do the scientists of the modern day, the astronomers and the astrophysicists, what is their view of the observable universe? Now, I have put observable in inverted commas because observable universe is all that we can see or detect by the various telescopes and the instruments that we have to observe the universe. Now, the current prevailing theory is that there are about 10 to the power 12 galaxies in the observable universe. And that number, I just wanted to write the number of zeros to see how it looks like. That's a big number. Now, in our Milky Way, there are about 10 to the power of 12 stars in our own Milky Way, which is not the biggest of galaxies, I'm told. So that amounts to well over 100 billion or uh, several billion stars, billion, billion stars. Okay. Now, so you have 10 to the power of 12 stars. And within the stars, you have all the planetary systems that are going on, just like our solar system, which is sun is only one star in our galaxy. Yeah. So if there are 10 to the power 12 stars, you might assume there are many stars where the planets are going around. So the calculation at this point of time is in the whole of universe, possibly there are 10 to the power 24 stars in the universe. Okay. Now, chapter 15. Gita verse 3, the first half of the verse 3 actually captures this. He says, Na rupamasya iha tata upalabhyate na antaha na cha adhi na cha sampratishta. Vyasa Krishna is saying, who has seen the beginning of the universe? Who has seen the end of the universe? Who has seen how the universe is maintained? So that, that concept in the Gita is quite understandable from this whole numbers that I've written, all these observable universe and predictions and so on. There is a paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, PNAS, and some of us who, who run laboratory research groups in the university, getting papers published in PNAS, it's a high impact journal. And uh, for us, it's a four star publication. So we do look at this journal very, very seriously with whatever data that, that gets presented there. So there was one such data in the astrobiology section describing the prevalence of Earth sized planets orbiting sun like stars in our own galaxy. And the numbers are quite striking 40 billion planets in a galaxy could potentially support life. This is Milky Way. And the scientists, basically, the astronomers basically go on and describe that one in five stars would have planets supporting life. And they also say that the nearest Earth-like star is like 12 light years away. Okay. So all pointing out that, you know, we are not alone in this universe. In fact, there is a Drake equation. Some of you may be familiar with the Drake equation. Go to SETI website. Uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence is a very interesting website to look through. But there is this famous Drake equation that actually estimates what is the probability or the chances that life may be existing in other parts of the universe. And the numbers that come out is quite striking. You're looking at millions and millions of places in the universe where there may be life. Okay, so. This is from a very scientific uh, 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 hypothesis of what the scientists believe at this point of time. But I would actually argue this is no big deal because our Vedic philosophers have always known that life exists everywhere in the universe. They've always known that life exists everywhere in the universe. If you, for example, the, the famous Gayatri Mantra that we do and we, we, we say the seven lokas, the higher planes, Bhu Loka, Bhuvar Loka, Suvar Loka, Jana Loka, Tapu Loka, Mahar Loka and Satya Loka. So these are all the ones that we do when we do our Gayatri, Japa or Sandhya Vandana or whatever. And then there are the, the worlds that are below the Bhu Loka, Atala, Vitala, Satala, Sutala, Tala, Tala, Mahatala, Rasatala, Patala and Lokas. These are the four, 14 levels of the, uh, the universe that the Vedas are describing. In fact, the 14 petals on which Chaturmukha Brahma is sitting, you know, that picture that I put at the left-hand corner essentially again grasps this. The 14 petals on which Chaturmukha Brahma is sitting basically corresponds to the 14 lokas. And in each loka is teeming with living beings of various capacities. 
yeah so what the astronomers are trying to discover today uh vedic philosophy has always accepted that fact that it is a stupid argument to believe that we are the only ones on this on the earth life is only on this tiny little planet and there are no lives elsewhere okay that is a silly concept to have it's always been the, the vedic view so that again it, it, the reason why i'm bringing this is to say that when we talk about the vedic god the vedic devatas and so on they are not just on this earth we are talking about living beings of higher intelligence that are that are spread across the universe and that is the the grand view of the vedic philosophy is looking at living things sentient beings who are there all over the universe who not only influence each other but they also have influence on earth and also our own lives this is the grand view of the vedic philosophy hindu knowledge academy.com will celebrate vedic culture and present its philosophies to the modern hindu in an accessible format our ancient heritage is our greatest strength through preservation and dissemination together let us spread positivity in the world thank you for listening and welcome to hindu knowledge academy